Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning guys. Okay, today our lectures uh, continues eh, previous from the last week uh, about the contract of uh, about the law of thought. So today kita continues our uh, syllabus, our topic is about the contract law. So before uh, we go through for our chapter, our co uh, topic for today's. So recap the law of thought. As we know, last week the we look at the other uh, type of the thoughts. Uh, namely, first the thought of defamations, the thought of trespass, and the thought of nuisance. So, in that is the in the law of thoughts. Okay. So in the law of thought, we must know about the what is the trespass. So the trespass is the direct interference with another person or his property which infringes the person's right to the enjoyment of his land, possession of his goods or the freedom movement. So trespass is actionable per se. This means that the claimant only needs to show that the trespass is occur true is not necessary to show that the defendant causes any damage of the injury. Trespass to the person. And there are three categories of the trespass to the person. First, assault. Second, battery. And the third is the fourth imprisonment. The assault. Assault is the act which causes another person to fear immediate and unlawful force. The claimant must therefore prove two elements. The defendant intended to the threatened physical injury and this threat causes the claimant to reasonable the fear the application of the direct of immediately forces. The claimant must reasonable fear that immediate force will be use against him. Battery. Battery is the application of the unlawful force to another person. The claimant have to prove three elements for the battery. The defendant intended to apply force to the claimant. The force applied must be direct and immediate and the force must be unlawful. Defense of battery and assault. Self-defendants and lawful errors. For the self-defense, a person may use reasonable forces to the defend himself or another. What is reasonable will be depend on the facts of the case. For the lawful errors, reasonable force may be used to make a lawful errors. Therefore, it is possible for the police officer to commit battery assault if the force he used to errors the claimant has unreasonable, for example, grabbing the claimant by the collar of the his shirt. For imprisonment, the for imprisonment is a whereby without a lawful reason, the claimant is prevented from the moving freely and it is a, therefore the deprivation of the personal liberty. Okay, based on the case at the cough in the Colin vs. Wilcott 1984, define the four imprisonment as the unlawful imprisonment of the constraint on another freedom of the movement from the particular place. The claimant must prove three elements. First, the defendant instead the restrict the claimant freedom of the movement. Second, the claimant freedom of the movement was completely restricted and the third is the restric restriction was unlawful. Defender of the fall implement lawful errors, court order of implement and mental health order. Any person for the lawful errors, any person who have been lawfully arrested may be obtained as a per the rule under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. Second, court order the imprisonment. The imprisonment sentence passed by court allow the defendant to the lawful detainment. Third, mental health order. The mental health act allow a person to be held in a mental hospital under the certain circumstance. For example, if the person poses a threat to the public or if he is 
he has suitable of tendencies. Okay, so we go through for the trespass to the land. The trespass to the land is defined as any intentional and in unjustifiable feelable interference with the land of the building or another person. Like the trespass to the person, no damage to the land building needs to be proven by the claimant. So the claimant must therefore prove the following three elements to the trespass to the land. First, the defendant act intentionally. Second, the defendant action interfered with the claimant land. And the such number three is a such interference occur without any legal authority. Differences to the trespass to land. So we go through the trespass to the good. The trespass to the good consists of direct or unlawful damage to or interference with good in the possession of another person. What the goods? Good are mobile goods. For example, good mobile phone or car or something item or something objects. The claimant needs to prove the following two elements to the thought of the trespass to the good chattel. The defendant must intentionally interfere with a goods and second, the good must be in the possession of the claimant. What is nuisance? How it is different from the trespass? Unlike trespass is the actionable person nuisance is a indirect interference to land which causes the damage. Therefore, the claimant must prove the damage. Private nuisance, a type of nuisance with an unreasonable preference in the claimant, use the enjoyment of his land, branches of the tree hanging over the another person. For the public nation, a type of nation which affects the reasonable comfort and convenience of the group of people. For example, a faulty straight light. We go to the next defamation. Defamation is the making and publishing of a false statement about the person which damages the person's reputation. Based on the case, Lord Atkin in the case Sim vs. Track. In Article 36, define defamation as an untrue statement which the causes the claimant to be regarded in feel, which feeling and hatred, contempt, ridicules, fears, and disestem in the eye of reasonable person. Two types of defamations. First is libel, second is slander. Libel is a permanent form, actionable per se. Second, for the slander, implement. Temporary form, not actionable per se. The claimant must be proved the following element for defamation, both libel and slander. The statement must be defamatory, the statement must be untrue, and must lower the reputation of the claimant in the eye of the reasonable member of society. The statement must refer to the claimant, and the statement must be published. So, this week, our topic is Introduction to the Contract Law. First, before we go through for the next chapter, next slide, we must know about what is the contract law, what is the person involved in the contract law, and what is the contract. All right. So, for our learning outcome for this topic, first, explain what is contract is and how contracts are formed. Second, outline the key element of the contract. Third, explain the difference between an offer and invitation to treat. Four, become familiar with the contract law terminology. Five, apply legal principles to given facts and demonstrate critically an analysis when, when answering fact-based question and Lastly, analyze case law and be able to apply case law in a persuasive manner to hypothetical case study. So, we go through for our topics. What is a contract? In meaning of the contract, a contract is an agreement between two parties who promise to give and receive something 
from each other known as a consideration and who intend the agreement to be legally binding. Okay. So, they have seven elements of a contract. First, offer. Second, acceptance. Third, consideration for capacity. Five, intention to decree legal relationship. Six, sell legality. And the last is agreement. This week lecture will be focused on offer and acceptance. Offer. What is the offer? Based on the offer dictionary of the law definition, an indicator of willingness to do or retrain from the doing something that is capable of the being converted by a certain in the legally binding contract. Another meaning of a, therefore is generally referred to a willingness to do or not to do something of a, are usually made with the respect to underlying term condition of agreement for example offer of the price the meaning of offer the person who is making an offer for example sue is offer to buy chen car for 5000 euro that is the offer the person to offer the car to buy to sell their car is the offer for the offering, the person to whom the offer is made. In this example above, this is would be Chen because Chen want to buy that car. So we can call the Chen as a offering. Su is the offerer. Okay, that is a offer. So we go to for invitation to treat. Okay. As we see, this is invitation to the treat. See, the different invitation and treat to the treat with the offer is the for the invitation. They have no price to show on their on their uh, on their poster or anything. Okay? So, but the offer they have the price. Okay? For their contract. So the invitation to treat. An offer is not the same thing the invitation to treat. An invitation to treat essentially an invitation to someone to make an offer is not an offer. This invitation or offer can either be accepted or rejected by the offeree. Based on the case, Pharmaceutical Society of Great Britain versus Books, Cash, Chemistry, LTD, 1953. This display for the sale are invitation to the tree. Same case, Fishes vs. Ball. Help the displaying the flip knife with a price tag in the shop window was in an invitation to treat and not an offer for the sales. Harris and Nicholson, 1873. It was held that an advertisement giving details of a forthcoming auction was not an offer but an invitation to make a offer and held in Patrice vs. Crittenden, 1968. Invitation to treat. Therefore, article display for the sales and advertisement are invitation to treat and not offer. However, reward posters are considered to be offer as outlined in Carly vs. Carbolic Smoke Ball Co. 1893. Offer. There are five roles relating on offer. An offer may be made to one. First is the an offer may be made to one or more parties. Second, offer need to do be made in writing. Third, the offer must be communicated. For revocation of the offer, other ways of the termination and offer. An offer may be made to more to one or more person based on the case Cahill with Carbolic Smoke Ball Co. 1892. A company advertised a flux cure. They said if the offer that if you use to remedy and then suffer from the flu, they will give you 100 euro. They put 1000 euro in the bank to show sincerity. A woman used it and call flu. 
she asked that the company should give her 100 euro. The court heard that. An offer can be made to many people. It's need to simply be between two percent. Advertisement are not usually offer. However, the company intended it to be an offer because they deposit one thousand euro in the bank. Offer needs to be made in writing. Writing is a form evident that an offer has been made, but it is not argument. Therefore, oral offer and offer made by gesture action are recognized. The offer must be communicated. The offeree must be made aware of the offer. The offer must be effectively communicated so that contract can be bound. Revocation of the offer. Revocation of an offer refer to the its termination. However, an offer can only be revoked if the offer has not yet been accepted. The offerer must communicate the recovation to the offeree. Based on the case Brian vs. Van Tienhoven, 1818. When someone paid to make an offer for a certain amount of time, an advertisement in the newspaper, they then their offer cannot be revoked until that amount of the time has elapsed. Other ways to ending an offer. Offer may also be terminated by one of the pharmacies. First, refusal. The offeree refuses to accept the offer. Number B, counter offer. When the offeree rejects the offeror's original offer and makes the alternative counter offer for the offerer to consider. The original offer can also be varied, in which case the new offer will be also considered as a counter offer. Number 3. C. Left of time. The offerer can state that this offer will be only exist for certain amount of time, but if it does not state time period, the offer will be last for reasonable period of time. This will vary according to the fact. Another relate with the lap of time may be uh, lap of the uh, stock of item. If the stock of item already finished, uh, the offer or the offerer can ending the offer. Yeah. That's on either party, however, in the person abstain, the offer does not know the offerer debt and the deceased offerer representative are able to carry out the contract, then the offer will not end. So we go through for the acceptance of the offer. Acceptance of the offer is a final and once an offer is accepted, then the contract is in acceptance and can only be revoked if the parties agree. However, there are five key rules relating to the valid acceptance of an offer. First, the offer can only be accepted by the offeree. Number two, the acceptance must be absolute and unqualified. Three, the acceptance must be communicated to the offeror. And number four, acceptance must generally be form that the offeror specifies. And number five, the offer must still be existent when it accepted. Acceptance by the offeree. Bond vs. John 1857. Only the person to whom the offer is made may accept the offer. Carlic and Carbolic Smoke Ball Co. 1892. Absentation must be absolute and unqualified. The term condition of the trial offer must be absolute and unqualified. Absentation must be communicated to the offerer. Communicate can be orally or in writing and it can also take the form conduct. For example, in Kali and Kabulik Smoke Ball Co., the purchase of the remedy was at the acceptance of the term of the offer. In the case of well House and Binding 862, silence does not constitute acceptance. 
Absistance must be generally be in the form that the offeror specifies. When there is no form specified, the reasonable method of the communication will be accepted. The offer must still be existent when it is absent, and offer ceases to exist on the time limit by which it is, has to be absent lapse. Second point, where no time limit has been set, the law assumes that the offer exists only for a reasonable period of the time but not indefinitely. Refer for the case Ramsgate Victoria v. Montefiore 1866. The court made it clear that the delay between 8 June and 25 November has not reasonable and far too great. The postal rule. This rule only applied when post is held to be the most reasonable means communication offer and acceptance, or if the offer state that post is the preferred method of the communication. The offer is effective when they arrive. Postal acceptance also in only effective when it arrives rather than when it is a place in the letter box. However, if the offerer instead the acceptance if effective when placed in the letter box, then this will be several. So that's all for this topic contract law. Yeah. For for our tutorial, yeah, please answer the question at the island and for the attendance, please give your comment and read in my tablet. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.